morning, Chapel Hill. It's time again for another devotional. Uh, hope you have your Bibles with you. We're looking at Colossians, and it's uh, chapter 3, verses 18 to, tw 18 to 21. That's where we'll be uh, landing this morning. Uh, but before we do that, let's bow our heads together. Father, thank you for your love for us, and thank you for the grace given to us. I pray your protection upon those who are watching this. Uh, pray your protection on the church and the community around us. And Father, as we phase, once again, as we phase back into worship together, keep us safe, and Lord, help us to have a time of joy and excitement in your presence by the power of your Holy Spirit when we do come back together. We ask these things in Jesus' name. Amen. All right, so we're in Colossians chapter 3. I wanted to reread verses 18 and 21 to you. This is where Paul uh, talks about how our Christianity is, is um, uh, manifested in our home relationships, and our family relationships. And he gives us a, a kind of a list of do's and don'ts, uh, a series of thou shalt and thou shalt not. It's kind of a, a, a this is, these are the laws of a, of, a, of a Christian household. And he says this, he says, Wives, submit yourselves to your husbands as is fitting to the Lord. Husbands, love your wives and do not be harsh with them. Children, obey your parents and everything, for this pleases the Lord. And then fathers, do not embitter your children, or they will become discouraged. So as you look at that, and as you study that, um, there are admonitions, and I, I call them laws. But, you know, in Paul, the Apostle Paul, it's, it's not really laws. These are, these are instructions. Uh, these are guidelines to follow uh, in expression, expressing Christianity, because Paul was really big on, it's not about you, you better do this and toe the line, that kind of thing. It's about receiving Jesus' love for us. He died on the cross for our sins and set us free from any kind of sin. So therefore, we should want to love God and we should want to give more of ourselves to God. And this is just his way of saying, here's how you do that in the family. So he starts with the with the wives and he uses this word that really has become a, a, you know, a word that almost a four-letter word in our society. He uses the word submit. And, you know, to the point where people are saying, oh, come on, that's got to be, that's not really an original Greek. That's got to be another word. Or maybe maybe men put that in there or something. Like that. Well, Paul was a man. Maybe he's all about women submitting to, to men and that kind of thing. And so there's this there's this frustration with the word. And they, they, they used to have, you know, years ago in the marriage vows, they had the word obey. You know, wife was to obey the man. And I, I kind of like that. Um, that's, I think that's a, as it should be. Um, actually, you know, I'm just kidding you. But the the, the word submit, um, when a man, you know, sit, puts that on a woman and says, you need, you see, the Bible says you need to submit to me, and then that's there's a lot of frustration, that kind of thing. And there's a lot of abuses in, in, the, um, in the idea that the woman should be submissive and uh, just always kind of comply with, you know, the man because he's, the head of the household and that kind of thing. And one of the things, one of the uh, kind of the misunderstandings about um, su submission and authority and headship and that kind of thing, that those teachings in the scriptures, is is this abusive notion that uh, it goes back to the to the Garden of Eden, where um, a, a man, a husband, will see these verses, and there there are several of them. It's not just here in Colossians. There, in, in most of Paul's letters, you. You see this this compilation of uh, wives submit to your uh, uh, husbands, husbands love your wives. That that seems to be the the, the interaction. And um, so a husband will look at that and say, "Boy, I've got it all over my wife. I can do whatever I want to do, and I can just tell her what to do, and she'll just be my slave for life, and that kind of thing." And so um, unfortunately, that's the way a lot of people read it, and a lot of it goes back to the book of Genesis where um, Adam and Eve. Uh, sin they fall in the garden and God looks at Adam and says you're going to be your punishment is that you're going to work the grounds by the sweat of your brow and uh, it'll produce thorns and thistles and you'll be frustrated at work um, and then he looks at the woman he says you're you're going to have pain in childbirth and the other thing is you're going to have a de desire for your husband and he will rule over you and there's and and you get that so you get that you know get the real, real fundamentalist religious person who says well the man will rule over the woman, and that's where they get their you know they, they attach that to the to the teachings here in Paul, and they really misinterpret and misuse uh, that uh, doctrinal truth or that theological truth which is the truth is that the tendency for a husband to 
rule over a, a woman or his wife um, was birthed not in the garden but pr prior to sin. It was birthed in the garden because of sin. It was a result of sin. Actually, the wording is uh, it was it was a result of the curse. It was part of the curse. Part of the curse that came on us when we fell into sin was this tendency for for husbands to dominate and to be abusive and to be lord kind of lorded over and um oh, and just kind of um take advantage of the fact that the woman is called to submit and so the, the husband rules okay and and that is not a good thing that is not a christian thing that is not a god thing that is not something god ever intended it's part of the curse and when God said that to Eve, he wasn't saying, this is the way I want it. He said, this is the way it's going to be because of sin, because of the sin that has come into the world. Sin has come into humanity. Sin has kind of come into husbands and husbands will have the tendency to want to dominate and to rule. And that is when, when you see a domineering husband, that is a reflection of the sinful nature and it's part of the curse. So I'll, I'll say all that. But that does not take away from the fact that the woman is still to submit. Now, coming back to what Paul says about submission, I want you to study, and I'll, I'll just, I won't, there's a lot to get into, but I won't, won't go any further than this, just those two first two verses, husbands and wives. He says to, to, the, to the wife to submit, and then he says to the husband, love. Now, if you go to the Ephesians and you, and you look at what he means, he elaborates on what it means to love. love he says, husbands, love your wives. Um, as Christ loved the church, and he laid down his life for the church. So the, com the, the comparison is the wife submits to the husband, and the husband lays down his life for the wife. Now, I submit to you, I, no pun intended, uh, that if you, if, if you see both of those in action, where the woman, the wife is submitting, and the husband is laying down his life, when you see that in action, first of all, you can't really tell the difference between one or the other. Because if I lay down my life for Sherry, it looks a lot like submission. I got, for example, just practically speaking, I want to watch uh, Gunsmoke episodes, and Sherry wants to watch um, uh, maybe RFD. I don't know what she, she wants. I don't like to, to watch what she wants to watch. She she watches uh, morning shows. Just say she she wants to watch a morning show. She really wants to watch a morning show. I want to watch Gunsmoke. I've got the TV clicker. And the Bible says to me, lay down your life. So I take the TV clicker and I hand it to Sherry. That's me laying down my life for my wife, right? Sherry receives the TV clicker and she remembers, no, I am to submit to my husband. So she hands it back. So submission and laying down life really looks a lot. It looks very similar. And I will submit to you this as well, that... When a woman uh, is in love with a man who truly, who she sees, he would lay down and he does lay down his life for her, then submission to that kind of a husband is much more palatable than the, than the submission to this domineering idiot uh, that is, is a husband who is just reflecting the fall and the curse. Um, so I guess I want you to meditate on those things and, and, and we need to be careful about throwing anything of God's word out so because God couldn't have meant that. So we're just going to throw out the word submit um, because the word submit is there. It's, word, it's there intentionally. And it's also there coupled, partnered with the idea that the husband is to lay down his life for his wife. So uh, meditate on those things and we'll talk more about the children and, and parents uh, tomorrow. But God bless you, Chapel. Let me close with a prayer and then we'll, we'll dismiss. Father, thank you for your love for us. Thank you for these truths. Uh, I pray that I was able to uh, unpackage some of these things. Um, I kind of stuttered and stammered through it. But Lord, I know that there is a truth here that when, we f when, when partners, husbands and wives, fully embrace what your word says as, as your prescriptions for them, um, then we'll be really set free in our relationships with each other. We, we long to see a, a, a true relationship where a husband loves a wife so much that he will lay down his life for her and a wife loves a husband so much that she will submit to him. And when that kind of relationship is going on, I think it's a beautiful thing. It's a reflection of your will and your guidance and your kind of family uh, pattern in these days. 
Bless us, Lord, as we go from here and give us good days. Bless those around us in Jesus' name. Amen. God bless you, Chapel Hill. We'll see you very soon.